to us Do you remember Why have you taken bus Why have you come to love Jehovah's Witnesses around this morning, so that's, I just started playing that for them, and <laughs> it seemed to work remarkably well. Um, so I read in the um, blurb that I would tell you my story. I, I should uh, let you know that I have very little interest in my story. And I remember being how interested I was in other people's story. So, out of great compassion. <laughs> Into wanting, I thought I'd go through my uh, book, sort of gradually explain how at the age of six I had my first spiritual experience in, uh, in the assembly, actually. And unfortunately, after the hour, we only got up to page 21 in a 400-page book. And so I thought, rather than go through the book, I might just talk and give you a, a very basic precy of what occurred. I understand, of course, that that could be quite boring for some of you. And so I took some of the pictures out of the book, and I'll just stick them up. Ah, oh, while I'm talking, I'll just put some of the pictures up out of the book, and I've, um, just before I came out, I thought I'd better subdivide them into pre-enlightenment, um, it first began at the age of six, and then nothing till 21 when I found this amazing book called Illusions. I began dancing, which wasn't really the thing to do for a a boy, when I was growing up, men in England sat around with beer and watched girls dancing. And I <laughs> somehow never smoked or drunk, just didn't like it. I would have if I'd have liked it. And I found such great joy in dancing. Oh, this is and when John Travolta thing happened, I was really well placed and had the immense good fortune to become the British dance champion at this place which was the Empire Ballroom where every Saturday night 5,000 dancers would gather together. Um, most of my friends were um, black so I had the, like Elvis who sung like a black man, I had the immense good fortune of being able to move my hips without really having to do anything else. 
maybe I'll stop this. <laughs> this, was a, this is my time in psychotherapy. <laughs> And there's a, there's, I started to get well known. I, I could do it like this. Just stay there. It's not even fine. It's fine. I, I started to get sort of well known and I had a few dance partners and I, I began to appear on the front of magazines and won the, eventually won the World Dance Championships and began to... Oh, I, I was always very lucky in nightclubs and I used to... <laughs> because... Because, um, that's me and my sister, because girls love to dance and I love to dance, I, I tended to hang around more with women, different women, and um, I, was, I was very fortunate in those days. Let me see, well, some of this you shouldn't see, really. <laughs> I formed, um, this was the World Dance Champions, we formed uh, a dance group and got to basically fly around the world for several years, uh, mainly working for the Sheraton. And we stayed in Sheraton hotels, and uh, this is in Las Vegas. Uh, I ended up fronting a show in Las Vegas. And basically got paid a ridiculous amount of money to dance for 10 minutes a day, which was absolutely my joy and pleasure. My, I was very, very, even though I was... Um, even though I was a, a disco dancer, I was not interested at all in any of it. I had not the slightest interest in things spiritual. In fact, I lived in uh, Korea, at the Sheraton in Korea for some months. And every week there were Buddhist ceremonies. And although I went to take pictures, it was only, of the, it was only to send home, really. I, I literally had no interest whatsoever in such things. And then, when I was uh, about 24, 25, I actually was able to retire and I bought a house on the beach in uh, Western Australia. And I remember thinking one day, is this it? Like, I, I could get a bigger... I could get a bigger boat, a, a nicer BMW, a new girlfriend. But it was just, I, and, and I went off on tour a, a couple of times, and, but I remember getting into what's called dispassion. I, I did a lot of traveling, and, and then there was just nothing, really. And, and, and I got a phone call from Australia and said, mate, I've got some work for you. And they were dancing. Yeah, mate, no worries. I've got some good top class work for you. Wickham. And I thought there was some magical place in Australia. And when I, when I arrived up there, I saw the poster in the window which said, ladies only. <laughs> and I rang him, the agent. I said, this says ladies only. And he said, yeah, yeah, mate, it's a strip show. I said, but, but I'm not a stripper. He said, it doesn't say you're a stripper, mate. It says you're the world dance champion, you're on last. You're the best, you're on last. Don't worry about it. And, uh, <laughs> and anyway, this night in Wickham, 400 ladies. And by the end of the night, they were relatively drunk. <laughs> and, the f and I was last, and everyone else had stripped. And they were drunk. <laughs> and I had about this much space. And I had disco gear on, ridiculous 70s stuff. And, and as, I came, as I did this, it was like the roof came off. And I just couldn't stop. <laughs> I just couldn't. I couldn't let them down. And so I just started to take my clothes off for a living. <laughs> <laughs>